and I'm your host, Marcus Dent, and that's Mikael Stevens. Look, What's we got a on? great show for you guys today. Uh, Mikael, it's been a wild weekend in college football, man. I mean, it's been some ups and downs and some and some turnarounds, man. I don't really know what to make of this weekend. Um, but, guys, before we go too, too, too far into the show, look, we really appreciate um, all the – the uh, inboxes that we're getting, hit that like button, subscribe. It'll help us out a lot. But, Kel, what's going on, man? Man, you tell me, man. Uh, my Hornets went down at home coming against those Rattlers, you know, so I'm going to keep a little quiet, but, you know, a lot of my old <laughs> classmates had a good time down there. Y'all get y'all that, think man. y'all homecoming too at the corn. Yeah, man, it was homecoming in the swag, and it was homecoming down at all corn, man. I went down for – you know, a little while. I don't get a chance to go down there much, man, but I did and uh, enjoyed myself, man, seeing some of my old friends and everything. And, you know, it was just, you know, homecoming is homecoming, man. You get a chance to see some people you had not seen in a while. You get a chance to, you know, kind of reconnect with some guys. And, you know, my, my teammate Tracy Cook is now the, the president, man, and make me feel real good, man. The, the way the campus look and everything was just really, really, really on point. And, and we got the W, so that's all that matters. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's all that matters. That's always a good thing. But when I was leaving, you know, I'm checking my phone, and uh, I'm looking at. I seen this, this score. And I was like, man, this can't be real. Let me look back at my phone. Maybe my phone ain't loading right or whatever. And I'm like, Vanderbilt, yeah, Alabama three. What in the world? I said, man, this can't be. And you know how it is. It's been like this for years. Somebody jump up on them, they come back. But you know what? There's there's one thing I can tell everybody, and it come. This is what this show is about. This elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is Bama, and what happened to Bama this weekend is called a transfer portal. You see what I'm saying? It's called a transfer mm-hmm. portal. The transfer portal is what happened to Alabama this weekend. You take Pablo, who came from what New Mexico State. Came from the yeah. Mexico State. The coordinator came over as an analyst. They brought some more kids over. And guess what? You just can't have a a, a basic game plan for any team anymore because you really don't know what they got. Man, everything has changed. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of parity. And right. you know, that's from the money. It, it, it's, you know, you, you can get any player you want. It's free agency at, on, on the college level. So, Expect more upsets. Oh, yeah, I, I really do, man. You see Tennessee went down. Um, it, it's – hey, man, I'm telling you, it's, this is what I'm trying to tell the parents. What you saw this weekend with Alabama getting beat by Vanderbilt is what's happening to college football. So your kid got to get out there as early as he can when it comes to camps, when it comes to conditioning, when it comes to – Everything that you can do to get your kid the edge, you got to do it. Because guess what? Mm-hmm. If you that coach need to fall in love with your kid in the eighth grade, ASAP. He need to fall in love with your kid in the eighth grade, and he needs to graduate early. Because if they don't, there's nobody gonna go to bat for him in that boardroom when they're looking at a portal kid or they're looking at a high school kid. So exactly, the early yeah. you get your kid. You know, um, accoladed to meeting coaches, meeting people, and building relationships. That's what it's about right now. You got they got to fall in love with your child, and, and that's important because the earlier the better. It just you know, kids are transitioning, going through puberty in middle school. These camps are necessary just to build the self esteem to go out there and compete to steal reps, to get in front of the line, to make them themselves noticed. So they go through okay. all that middle school. When they, when they get to high school, they ready for the colleges and they ready for those camps to show their talents. You think about this. Georgia State beat Vanderbilt. I thought it might have been overtime. I know it was a close game. But if you go mm-hmm. look at the kids that are on these teams, man, everybody is – doing a little different. Let's just take Mississippi. Let's just take what's happening in Mississippi. So 
I think it may be two years ago. It might have been three, but I'm, I'm almost sure it was two years ago. They went from eight out-of-state kids to 15 out-of-state kids. So that's seven more scholarships that in-state kids are not going to get in Mississippi. That's about, mm-hmm. a, that's about 100 kids with all the JUCO we got. That's about 100 kids going to lose a scholarship because the game is changing. Okay, now you add the portal in. You know how many kids in Mississippi, well, Alabama, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever state that's not going to get that chance to go play football, but mainly Mississippi, because we talk about Mississippi, we're here in Mississippi. But mainly, we're losing a hundred kids because they can go out and get more out-of-state kids right now. And you got the transfer portal. So if you're in Mississippi, it's it's at least, I want to say. 300, two to 300 scholarship that's not going to be given out that was given out three years ago. Right. So how are you going to get your kid into this college? You cannot wait until he is a junior or a senior and start talking about here, yeah, we're going we're gonna to camp next year. We're going to do this. Man, you can't do that. You know, you know the old saying, if he good, they're going to find him. <laughs> well, <laughs> guess what? You better already be good because now be with, good. With, with all the social media, uh, Instagram, Twitter, better known as X, you got to be able to present your kid and hit these coaches, and they watching. They got these analysts. They watching. That's their job. That's their job to find kids from the eighth grade to the twelfth grade. That's their job. And if you're waiting till the eleventh and twelfth grade, nobody is going to go into a room and battle for your kid over a portal kid. No, at this point, you should be. If you in middle school, you should almost be training for high school. When you're in high school, you should be training for the NFL. Just so you can look good when you get the college. Right. If that, if that um, analyst, a coach, or whatever recruiter is not in love with your child, that means I've been watching this kid since the eighth grade. I've been watching him grind. I've been watching him work out. I've been watching him um, on his meal plan. I see how he's gaining weight. I see how he's getting stronger. I see how he's getting faster. That means that that coach is falling in love with your child. And when they go in that war room and they got to pick between, okay, this kid can come in January, so I get a whole spring with him, right? I get a whole exactly. spring with him. This other kid, yeah, he's a freshman or sophomore in the portal, but he's not playing where he's at. So, hey, maybe maybe something there to, you know, you know, they're looking for a kid that's already kind of ready in because they just don't want to take a chance on having to get this kid faster, stronger, and all that in, in eight months. But if, if, if somebody you know. fell in love with your kid, you're already there. Here's a question. How much of the responsibility is it of the coach to have your, your, your student athlete recruited? Man, I don't think the burden lies on them. I think the burden lies solely on the parent. I think the burden lies on the parent um, for the simple fact that coach is getting paid to coach at that school. He is not getting paid to be a recruiter for your child. And yeah. I, I am one of the ones who, until I got into coaching, I did not realize how much stuff that, how much extra stuff a coach has to do. And plus, he got his family. He got honey dudes to do on the weekend because he gone all week. So we got to be more responsible because we see what's happening. You know, the Tennessee, Arkansas thing, eh, you know, that's, that's Arkansas. They got a few guys, but they got, they got Petrino in there as a, as a coordinator, man. And, you know, he's, he's, he's a tough he's, place to win too. Huh? Arkansas is a tough place to go win. No, it is. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's, it's, it's a tough place to go win. But, you know, I'm just sitting here looking at what happened Saturday 
was just like an eye opener. Then I got to thinking about um, the scholarship that we're losing with the with the state opening up for more out of staters to come in and play the JUCO ball. And then you got the portal. Man, we're losing. You're gonna. There's a lot of kids in Mississippi will not get that opportunity. They got an opportunity three years ago. And I'm trying to tell parents, uncles, whoever, you got to create a system where your kid is being seen and these coaches got to fall in love with your, with your, with your athlete. Because if they don't, they're not going to have nobody to battle for them in that room that day. They, they, they say, okay, you know, we got, we got three receivers. We got, Two high school guys, we got two um, coming out the portal. Who do we take? Now, I've seen on the high school level in some schools where there are recruiting coordinators on the football staff. Yes. It, it, it's it's yes. not I, I, a common practice, before. but it exists. And it with football changing in our face in real time, some programs, especially on a 7 eight and 6 a level, should probably incorporate some type of recruiting recruiter to make these contacts and build these relationships and, and, and be used as a going between to help guide some of these student athletes and these coaches who may want to get in front of these kids and recruit them. I, guess I, I know of two schools that have the recruiting coordinator deal. And I think that's kind of done through a booster club kind of deal. I know at those two schools that it is. So I don't know if the school board would administrate, say, okay, look, we want to help our kids get out. We're going to put money toward having a coordinator for that. I don't know if the school board would do that. Now, I know they will in other states because they got bigger budgets. You know, the budgets are not really big here, although we got some 7 eight schools. Those schools will not be 7 eight if they was in Georgia. True. So, you know, I think that's a budget issue. I think, you know, to do that right, um, you definitely have, you have to have somebody who's been in that field. Because you don't have anybody that's been in the field, it really not going to do you any good. To have somebody out there just sending emails. If you don't have anybody that's connected and know the coaches, it's not going to do you any good. So what I'm saying is with the point that you're making, I definitely agree with it. It's something that's very much needed. But I think the sole responsibility is on the parents. And we want to let you understand how these things are changing. You know? Things are changing for your athlete right now in Mississippi, in Alabama. Alabama don't even have junior college. So they getting hit really hard. I've seen a lot of talent end up in JUCO out of Mississippi. I'm talking yes. about D1 bona fide talent. Yeah. But but he, he, here's the thing. You take a you take you, you take an Alabama State, you take a Louisiana Monroe, and just say they get a kid that's all whatever that conference is. That kid, as a freshman, he will not be there the next year. He is going to be gone because somebody's going to grab that kid. You got to if you're coming out of high school, you got to make sure that your child is can compete with these kids that they're having to go get from these other places. That's the main focal point. So what do you do? What camps do you go to? Hey, you start off in the in the sixth and seventh grade, finding a camp that works on your skill set. Your skill set only. You need to find those camps ASAP. They're out there. You need to you need. We talked about this the other day on the show. You talking about a trainer? You might not can afford a trainer, but guess what? There's plenty of trainers on YouTube. I seen one lady; mm-hmm. she was out there with her son, and they were getting it in. Oh yeah, I saw that. You know, I saw that. So you, you there's no excuse. No, 
because our trainer was outside <laughs> from sun up to sundown. <laughs> right. But I'm talking about just position training that you have to have. So when you go to a camp at Ole Miss or Mississippi State, they're looking at your footwork. They're looking at the things that you're doing uh, with your hands. They're looking at your everything that you need to be doing that's, that's doing it in the right way. They're looking at that. Because they want to see your that's part, that, right. It's IQ, but it's part of your football IQ too. Absolutely, it's a part of your football IQ. If that kid gets up there and he sees this kid is in a in a stance and he's leaning, he's looking at his hips. Well, he knows how he knows what he got to do. I mean, those type things right there are the things that kids need to learn early. And I'm not saying that your high school coach cannot give you this. But it's, it's, it's critical they don't have the time to do everything that you need this day and time. You can't get everything from a high school coach no more. Oh, no. And even on the training part, training one or two times a week, that's not enough. No. You may need to go three times a week, six times a week. It gets really deep depending on your position, depending on your physical conditioning. You may want to go in the morning before school, uh, in the evening after school, and you may want to do this three, four times a day to unlock your strength and your skill set. Because let's let's just face it, if you want to play SEC ball or even something as far as big team, four. you yeah. got to be ready to play. You got to be ready. That is the closest thing to semi-pro you're going to get. No, it, is, it has turned into – the league definitely has done that with with money and the way things is going. And a lot of these colleges have general managers now, so it's tur it's turned into um, it's always been a business in the last ten years, but now it's definitely a business. It's it's and pretty much kids, different in the NFL. And the kids trying to get out of JUCO, that's like gladiator sport. Go to a game on Thursday night. Oh it's, man, I know it's talent there. <laughs> Yeah, you know. and, and the thing about that, it used to be a time when Alabama, uh, Mississippi State, you had Montez Sweat come out of out of Colin, and you had, I mean, you had all these great guys come out of JUCO. You had Pernell McPhee come out of ICC. You had Derry Slay out of ICC. Those kids right now, the JUCOs are not getting those kids because those kids can go somewhere else now and play. And get a little bit of money, and then when they when they ball out wherever they at, they they can just step right up. So Even that's at the, the mid major. Say so what now? The mid major level, the mid major level, you could go to a mid major and correct ball out and get paid and go to correct. the SEC. Correct, and so that's why that's why that's why here on the insight, man, it's real real important for these parents to get this message. Parents, look, I'm telling you, you need to do whatever it is to get that program, to get that coach to fall in love with your kid. Because if you don't, your chances are going to be slim and none unless your kid is a super athlete. If your kid is a three-star player, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle. You're gonna struggle getting him out. I see more three-star players struggle getting out right now and I, than I ever have. And some fours, some fours end up at a place that they don't want to be. So the message is whatever you gotta do. And and next time we break, we we talk on a topic that's you know, um, similar to this, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna start listing some camps, you know, some different things that um, the kids can go to. Some that I know that are, are reputable. You know, I've worked with several, I have my own. Um, so, you know, it, there's things that are out there that we can give you the information on that you need to go check out. And, and I might just drop that in the comments. I might drop some of those places in the comments in the description um, after the show. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. And yeah, I might, I, might, better, I might do that. 
drop some links yeah. and stuff like that in there because I mean they they you, you got to do it. And like I said, this week, man, Alabama was sixty three and three against Vanderbilt. Mm. Had lost to him in forty years. Then you come in and you bring in Pablo that comes out of the portal and some more guys come out the portal. Now, <laughs> everything a little different. Yeah. You can't, can't just you can't be sleepwalking nowhere in the SEC. No, you can't sleepwalk <laughs> nowhere, man. You're gonna get your head bust to the white meat if you do. That just that just old miss. We're gonna go white meat. Tennessee, white meat. Alabama, white meat. Mm. So yeah, I mean it's it's a different day and time. It's a different world, but we want to make sure that we're bringing um, the parents the info that that you need to that you need. And uh, I had a, I had a parent the other day. Her son is he's tall. He's six five, something like that. And she's like, well, he, 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 he's 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 just not ready." Okay, I understand that, but you take him to camp. He's six five. That don't grow on trees. Yeah, that's called eye candy. That's measurables. Eye candy, yeah. Whatever, however you want to put it, six five don't grow on trees. You know. So you know, my thing of it is, you take uh, you take what's going on right now in college football, and what's going on in high school football. You got to be. Um, you got to be step fast in what you're doing. You take Kentucky almost knocking off Georgia a couple weeks ago. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, why? Tell me why. Now, Kentucky has a uh, – Kentucky is a what I call a base team. They don't have a whole lot of Porter kids, but they do get some. But Kentucky is – I want I want to call a home, what I want to call a homegrown type team. They try to go to high school and build their stuff out of high school. They 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 trying that. They they they're filling their spots with you know um, portal guys. Right. But you just have so many so few teams that do that. Now let's talk about the FCS. HBCU, we're struggling right now. The swag does not look like the swag looked four years ago. Because the players are yeah. not there. I think the players are there. I'm, I'm going to put it on the recruit. I always have. And I, no, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah. saying that the players are not at the school. Yeah, it, it's, it's some of it is recruiting, but some of it is this portal, I think. Oh, definitely. It, it definitely a lot of kids are going to vote for better opportunities and right. better resources and money. Every know. year, every year, the sweat loses a couple kids to a uh, mid major or somebody, somebody like that, just for the simple fact hey, look, they want to do something different. They want to go get a little bit of money. Um, I think Mississippi Valley lost three last year on their defense. And they're all playing at a mid major. So, hey, you know, parents, you you got to get you got to get right because this thing is this thing is dead serious. So you know, like I say, we gonna have to uh, we gonna have to do a little bit of, uh, more, um, and we are gonna go a little bit more in depth, you know, on this Markel, maybe next week or something. We're gonna try to put something up there so I uh, get a parent some literature. That they can go, you know, kind of look. I'm gonna do a little bit in, in the description and and and, and uh, down in the comments. I'm, I'm gonna leave some for them, but I really want them to understand what they're up against right now. And you and you know, you you have a kid that's your kid is a sophomore. You know, so you know exactly where I'm coming from. Man, it's 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 a journey to say the least. Oh yeah, definitely a I journey. Wouldn't trade it in for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't trade it in for nothing, but it but it's no, definitely it's a man. journey. 
and and you know i've been blessed where i've i've been raised in a family of coaches and i'm a former athlete so i understood early on you know after i'm done with them somebody else got to get them because you know my expectations was high but i had enough sense and wherewithal to say hey can you help me out i noticed you train and you know got to going and training and meeting people and networking then that's how you were not hooked up fbu that's right. that's which right. you know a lot of people didn't like fbu especially yeah. here in mississippi and i thought fbu was a great platform you know four or five years ago to get kids notoriety the hey, we, play, like we played for a national championship hey some of them kids did, did. and if you go back to that national championship team that whole roster is littered with four, five stars. stars. Right. And Man, I, and I tell people it may be one of the best teams ever put together, no matter the age. Right. Yeah. Once once you those know. guys sign, that's gonna be that's gonna be one heck of a roster. From yeah, uh, when we go back to that, it's gonna be something serious. It is, man. You know. It is. It's definitely, you know, like I say, it's it was a it was a journey and you know I, I appreciate the parents and everybody you know that that went on that journey with us man but uh we're gonna get ready to get out of here man like i said Markel, hey i appreciate you man uh um, anytime always you know like i said guys i'm gonna hit that like button for me and subscribe and we'll see you next time peace peace